All right, it's a lovely day today, and I'm back here in nature's fume hood. I think some people call it the outdoors. And uh, I've got my best friend, Discount Xylene here, and I'm going to try and melt up some plastic or dissolve some plastic. I got tired of breaking peanut butter jars, so I invested in a, a Pyrex beaker. Oh, so nice. Anyway, we're going to try and hit up some uh, number five plastic. We're going to just cut some pieces of this and uh, see if it's going to dissolve in the xylene. To be honest, I did have a go at uh, dissolving PET, that number one plastic, in xylene without any success at all. It was just... it. that stuff is crazy, man. Xylene here, and we're going to give another shot at uh, dissolving some plastic and seeing if we can make anything out of it. Today's uh, victim is the plastic bottle polyethylene terephthalate. Oh, and you can tell that by the PET. This one says PET actually. But if you find the little one symbol on there with PET under it, or PETE, polyethylene terephthalate ester, uh, that'll tell you the one is an indication of how easy that thing is to throw away into the garbage rather than recycling. And uh, these things are very easy to just toss out. They have made them a lot thinner from back in the day, but, uh, you know, anyway. It's just a good indication of why you shouldn't throw that away. It's so resistant to uh, any sort of degradation. You really have to work hard at it. I looked it up and there's a lot of nasty chemicals you can use to do it, but um, in general, yeah, bad stuff. And of course the thing that makes it bad is nothing more than the chemical structure of it. Um, polyethylene, those were those plastic bags, they're just basically a long chain hydrocarbon. Hy carbons and hydrogens linked together. Nothing too, nothing fancy about it at all. And this stuff is number, f the number five pack plastic is uh, polypropylene. It's similar in structure to the polyethylene except instead of having just hydrogens and carbons there's a well it does still have just hydrogen and carbons but it has a, a methyl group off one of the carbons as you go along the chain so that kind of adds a little more structure to it and i guess it makes it a lot more heat resistant now the pet the pop bottle stuff the water bottle stuff is um polyethylene terephthalate which has uh, is completely different it's still a long chain but it's got a benzene ring in it and a couple ketone groups and really makes you know it adds a lot of stability to that structure and as a result doesn't break down worth fucking shit so once you've made it uh you're kind of stuck with it for a long long time and uh, humans of course have decided that the best place for that kind of shit is what the ocean mostly fuck ridiculous i didn't cheat i didn't figure out whether this is actually going to dissolve in this at all. I didn't do that with PET and was sorely disappointed that nothing happened. It shall be a surprise. Now, so this is probably what you're most familiar with, is bottle caps. And this is also number five. It's, see, it's heat resistant, this stuff, which is why it's used for foods and whatnot. Um, maybe I should just, I'll just put a bit of this in. Yeah, then we'll get going on it. Okay. In with our xylene. And again, we're going to start, we're just going to uh, put it in and just let it sit before we add any heat to this, just to see what happens. Okay, uh, don't worry, don't worry folks, I have one more can of this stuff, so... We're in good shape. Okay, I'm not seeing much uh, action here, so we're gonna tip up the heat a bit. We'll just put it on a little bit and turn up, turn up the stir action. All right, it's had about 20 minutes in the soup with some heat, and it does appear like the plastic is softening a bit. Although I wouldn't say we are we hit the dissolution stage yet, not by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, I turned the heat up quite a bit and you can actually see that the xylene is boiling. Uh, but you'll also notice that the 
the plastic's gone. It's it's totally in solution now. So more, more, more is what it's asking for. <laughs> nice. It's somewhat viscous. All right, we're still growing strong here, so yogurt container. Oh, and a leaf, I guess. I think we've reached super saturation on this. I don't feel like we're going to get any more to dissolve in there. So I think. So our last bits are like, uh, well, they're like noodles at this point. Well, maybe they will go into solution. Uh, okay, okay, I'm willing to I'm willing to wait a little bit more. I think. All right, it's boiling away furiously. I can't get the rest of the plastic into solution at all, so we're going to call it quits here. Uh, and take out a few chunks if I can get them. Mm, maybe not. Yeah, it's hypersaturated at this point. And it rapidly solidifies. Look at that, eh? Very quickly. Okay, uh, I just need to let this just cool a bit. I'm gonna go get some gloves and we're gonna treat some stuff with this, whatever the hell we're gonna call this now. All right, I got a few things going on here. I've got the, the PET, the polyethylene terephthalate. That's your number one. And like I said before, I don't think this will dissolve it, although I don't think I had the xylene that hot. Uh, so I'm just going to pour a little bit into one of these cups. And if it... Oh! What's going on? Oh, the, the cup portion just... The cup portion just like sucked right up. There's... just went flat. Okay, that's not what I expected to happen. That's cool nonetheless, but what in the world? Okay, hopefully it's not too late. Oh, it's not. It's still nice and liquid. Okay, I got a bottom of a much more robust PET container. We shall put a little in there and see what happens. That's looking fine. We also have a aluminum can. We should be able to peel it out of that. I'm not sure if it's going to bond to that or not. It might. Okay, that was a waste. I also want to see what happens when you just put it on wood. And the other thing is uh, melamine. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to not stick to the melamine. So we'll be able to peel that off once it's dried up. And I'll just top this off. And there we go. My stir bar is in there somewhere. So, <laughs> uh, funny. Have a look what's going on in the plastic container. Not, it's not happening in the tin one. It's very, it's almost active. Don't know why that is forming a skin and then there's a uh, sort of almost bubbling not really but you can tell it's like moving the whole thing is kind of moving around holy you can contrast that to the one in the tin can there's there's really nothing happened at the surface of this one all right the bubbling and crawling on the plastic one has finally calmed down and by Jove I think I've managed to create the first artificial scrotum. My polypropylene experiment has been sitting around for must be like a week and a half. We haven't had hardly any sunshine so I haven't been able to dry it out very effectively. I've just been sitting around. But uh, now it seems like uh, we are going to get some hot weather so I want to be able to have a look at what, um, what happened to this stuff. This is the uh, 
untreated wood. And let me get a close up of that. Just for the record, my camera does not autofocus, which is pretty, pretty lame, I know, but so I have to stop it and uh, fire it up again after it's refocused. But you can see it's cracked quite a bit, which is not great for doing anything with it, but, and it, well, and it's not very well adhered to the surface either. So uh, that's kind of a useless thing. It's kind of a, um, uh, like it turns into kind of a powdery, foamy kind of business. When you pick it off let's have a look at the one on the melamine board same deal comes off a little bit easier but still just like a, a just a foamy kind of mess not much good for anything okay so the artificial scrotum is looking quite nice and i'm just gonna it comes out quite easily and oh it's extraordinarily light so it has the same type of texture that the stuff on the boards had, which isn't surprising. And it, it's a little bit um, squishy. And we'll try and, we'll put it out in the sun and see what happens with that. Like the other one was also, had quite, had some flexion to it that went away once it completely dried out. But this has been sitting around for a long time, so it feels like it's pretty dry. Now... This is the canned one, and this has most of the mass of that uh, uh, experiment in it here. And I'm just going to try and tap it out. There we go. Also extraordinarily light. And uh, the, yeah, it's not, um, yeah, I don't think it's completely dried all the way through. So both of these are going to be good to go in the sun, I think. So I'm going to do that today. We've got a little bit of sunshine. Hopefully the heat stays up and we'll get some of this uh, xylene driven off and see what our final product looks like. It's cool stuff though. Like it's pretty fucking neat just as it is. Although, you know, if you, if you squeezed it real hard, I think it would just turn to dust at this point. So, okay, into the sun. All right, let's wrap this up, shall we? Let's cut into this stuff and have a peek. Okay, so you know what this reminds me of is the extruded polystyrene, you know, the stuff you buy to insulate your house. It's all, it's very similar. It's about the same weight. Um, again, this probably doesn't have a hell of a lot of uses, but it is kind of interesting. Now, I think what's happening here, you're not reforming the same plastic that you had before after you've dissolved it. It's not repolymerizing, but you probably have all these little bits and pieces that simply... Um, do they stick together? Maybe, but you can tell that this is like a, almost powdery at this point. So I don't really think that there's any real cohesion between any of those molecules anymore. It's kind of a uh, wasted time, <laughs> but hey, now you know, right? And uh, I don't know what you could use it for. Probably nothing other than, you know, if you lose a scrotum somewhere along the line. Anyway. Thanks for watching this, whatever the fuck this was. Stupid, really. Um, oh, interesting. Top layer is different than bottom layer. Hmm, I wonder how that happened. Ah, it really is a scrotum. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, but again, probably useless. It's highly flotatious, as you would expect. So before we give up on this stuff entirely, let's see what happens when you flambe the surface a little bit. Like making a plastic uh, creme brulee here. Oh, it's, it's really bringing out the, the colors. That's lovely. Okay, so from our, our foamy little mass, we now have something that actually resembles something useful. Oh geez, I gotta stop touching this. I'm gonna hurt myself. Okay, so it's actually formed a nice 
candy coated shell on the outside. It's quite hard and actually it's still very, very hot. So it does retain a lot of, it reta it's actually, yes, it's quite hot on the inside. So uh, it retains a lot of heat as well. So that actually might be something you could use for something. You could, I don't know, I'm, you know, you could make a boat if you really had to and you had a whole lot of xylene. <laughs> which you don't, I'm sure. So, but anyway, kind of neat. All right, that done give me an idea. I knew there was a reason I was hanging on to this Zelda mince tin for the last eight years. I just hope I have enough material to make this happen. So what we have here is powdered polypropylene. This is basically what it is. It's a powdered form of polypropylene, right? And we've seen it will melt. So let's just see what happens when we uh, try to actually make it into something useful. Just gotta pack that in there. All right. Don't want that hot. There's probably a more elegant way of doing this. Well, place your best is whether I'll be able to get that out of there. I have a little bit of blanking spots there, but... not going to be shaking it into the corners up here. If we sprinkle a little uh, of this magic pixie dust on top here, I wonder if it'll at least color it up a bit. There we go. Okay, should be cool enough. Let's see if we can get it out of the mold. Oh, pops right out. And look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yep, it's uh, not too bad at all. You could definitely cast whatever the hell you want out of this stuff. You just need some sort of mold for it. There, have a look at that. Picks up all the nice detail. And uh, stop a bullet. Anyway, I'm glad I found something to do with this shit, so uh, hopefully you found that pretty interesting. Thanks for watching. Cheers.